It is a multi-million dollar industry constantly surrounded by controversy. We're talking about hip-hop. Some people love it, others hate it. Well, in his new book, Know What I Mean, Reflections on Hip-Hop, Georgetown University professor Michael Eric Dyson takes a look at the good, the bad, the ugly, and the future of hip-hop. Michael Eric Dyson, good to have you back. Good morning. Always good to be here. You've written books on race relations, on Hurricane Katrina, uh, Marvin Gaye, Bill Cosby. Why'd you tackle this one? Well, I have a, a very long-standing interest in hip-hop. It's a phenomenal art form. It has lyrical uh, creativity, has rhetorical power. It also has some serious problems. So I wanted to assess the state of the soul of hip-hop at this time, 30 years at, into the game. You've been here enough for me to know not to try to put words in your mouth, but let me try for a second you correct me. It seems to me the basic point, or one of the basic points you're making, this book is yes there is plenty to criticize in hip-hop there right. is a lot of as you would put it the ugly right but it's impossible and it creates a disservice if we discount the art form or the genre in its entirety that's a great point uh, the, the point is that hip-hop has created so much difficult art for many people because it's coming from people we're not used to hearing from poor black and Latino people who grab the microphone this is a problem for black middle-class people certainly for the broader mainstream American culture but it has such incredible insight you know a guy like Jay-Z writing about his father now my all my teachers couldn't reach me and my mama couldn't beat me enough to match the pain of my pops not seeing me so when you when you hear what they're saying you have to pay attention to the soul what of you're the thing is we're, we, if we stop and listen we're actually getting a glimpse into the into the human ex experience Absolutely. of people in in some parts of the African American community but right. the critics say and the sure. critics are not only white they're sure. African American as Absolutely. well who say why are certain aspects of this experience glamorized right. as opposed to for example if you're talking about prison right. and violence why right. does it sound as if it's being glamorized not put in a negative context sure well because you've got both and you've got people who do glamorize it and glorify it you've got people who say say, look, this is the inevitable consequence of being a young black man in America. When you have the over-incarceration of young black men where they are disproportionately incarcerated, it's not hard to figure out why they would glamorize that because it's a necessity. Others say, no, let's look at the limitations here and let's look at why it's lethal for us to embrace a prison culture that is not our friend. But, but are, are the louder voices or the more widely listened to voices the one that say, let's put it into perspective, or are they the one that are glam ones that are glamorizing it? Well, you think about it, a lot of white record executives are in that business. Do they want to hear about you blame critiques. the record executives. Let's just say, do you want to hear a critique of white supremacy or do you want to hear somebody shaking their behind? So it's everybody's involved. It's not just the white record executives, the black record executives, and the young people who say, look, when I write socially conscientious lyrics, I can't get played on the radio. They become underground. Oh my God. You know, so I have to be put on the side here. But when I'm talking about shaking my behind or the woman's behind, then that gets played. I was, I was reading a transcript of an interview you did on a radio program not long ago, and, and a caller asked you what I thought was an interesting question saying instead of why don't we have an art form that is African Americans we can see as taking us forward right. instead of this that she I think it was perceived as a step backwards and I think she even compared it to a modern day minstrel show yeah saying yeah, that in, in, in a large part you've got these base stereotypes being broadcast to a largely white audience and that's right. a problem of course it is but you see it's not the burden of young black people to educate the broader society or the globe Snoop Dogg as opposed to W.E.B. Du Bois 50 Cent as opposed to Bell Hooks I think we have enough scholars and insightful critics out there to offer that to people who are desirous of having but, but it. isn't there a fear that the audience will be lazy Michael oh, of course. And, and they will not look further than these images and, and what they're hearing on the radio Absolutely. to examine the African-American experience. No, no question about that. But again, the so-called minstrelsy and the stereotypes are the ones that are portrayed. But even there, some of those people are poking fun at this minstrelsy and stereotypes. Certain middle-class black people have an intolerance for irreverent art. Art should not just coddle you. It should challenge you. And what's negative to some people, I'm an ordained Baptist minister. If some religious people hear me affirming gay and lesbian people, that's negative to them. So negative versus positive can never do. It has to be productive versus non-productive, edifying versus well, destructive. Well, I like your point. You also say, hey, listen, the history of art, whatever genre we're talking about Absolutely. has never been that it's got to make you feel good. Oftentimes art needs to be in your face. Bob Dylan has to get in your face. Uh, the Rolling Stones at some point they have to get in your face. So does hip-hop. So, it, But is there a line? If that in-your-face aspect of hip-hop is glamorizing violence and, and drugs in some ways and objectifying women, should we, any of us, you, me, anybody, right. stand stand up and say, stop, enough, don't do it? Well, sure. So you're going to start with Sly Stallone, you're going to start with Bruce Willis, you're going to start with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, I see. Then you get to maybe Johnny Cash. The point is that art forms that are not as much under the microscope as hip-hop, race and class play a big difference in who gets a chance to say and who doesn't. Look, when Thelma and Louise made that movie, men went crazy. Oh, my God, look at all right. that violence. There's less violence in Thelma and Louise than the first three minutes of many art forms and, and made I, by men. I like the point you make, that in every genre of expression there is 
stuff that's worthwhile and there's stuff that's crap. How about the expression? I it, mean, it's look at self-help books, the genre there. I mean, half of it is garbage. It is. But there's a couple of gems in there. Opera the same. What is opera about? Murder and incest. Film. Some of his great film. I mean, you know, a little bit heavy of his metal. ingenious. Heavy metal. Any art form. So the thing is, when you look at hip-hop, a guy like Scarface, a guy like Jay-Z, a guy like Nas, a woman like Lauryn Hill, Bahamadia, Common, Most Def, Talib Kweli, these are incredible uh, artists who are doing incredibly complex things. Don't just dismiss them because of your antipathy toward young people who speak in irreverent fashion. Bottom line, broad brush strokes are often dangerous. It's very problematic, my friend. Michael Eric Dyson, good to have you. Always good, good to have you here. back. Thank you. And if you'd like to read an excerpt from Know What I Mean, you can find one on our website.